the Lord, Saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's sermon is going to be on, are you transparent enough to walk through walls? Because you know, as soon as we go to heaven, we're going to be put on our glorified bodies. And Jesus, when he was here, was transparent enough to walk through walls. And when he did so, he was able to destroy fear and doubt. And I know if you get transparent, you'll be able to get rid of oppression and depression and all sorts of anxieties that that bother you. So tonight I want you to grab your Bible, your paper, and your pen and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. was 
transparent enough to destroy fear? Are you transparent in your walk with Christ? See, transparency means you're not religious. You're not putting on that act. You're talking about your struggles. You're not ashamed of your struggle. Because you know the Lord and Savior has taken it away. Because the day you receive him, all sin has what? Been taken away past, Amen. present, and future. So every time you call on the name of Jesus and confess your mess and repent and forgive somebody, you have become clean again. And then when you run into people who are in your condition, you can tell them, I've been just like you. Amen. Be transparent. Because when you're transparent, you can destroy fear. We get ready to see, because when I first read this, I didn't know he did it twice. I don't even remember him doing it once. But God showed me that he walked through these doors twice. Amen. We're going to see what else he destroyed. But when you're transparent, you can destroy oppression, depression. You can destroy, destroy the circumstances in your life. It's also called being, having integrity. Saying to someone, yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, I did this. Yeah, I got a problem. Help me. But if you cover it, guess what? The cover's going to get ripped off. You've got to be transparent enough to walk through all. Your deliverance relies on your transparency. Because when you hide it, the devil can use it. Oh, y'all ain't here. Every time I try to hide my addiction from the church, the, the devil will rip that cover off and I get caught in two weeks. I ain't been hot. No, I ain't doing nothing. Next thing you know, they see me on the corner. There you go, Brother Rudd. See? But when you tell them the devil and begin to be transparent in your walk with Christ, the devil loses. Because now he ain't got no weapons to use against you. Amen? Do y'all understand what I'm coming Amen. Amen. So be transparent enough to walk the walk. There are people who have drug problems. You got to live. Go tell them I've been just like you. There are people who have sexual problems. Go tell them I've been just like you. I don't have a problem telling you I was addicted to the sex. I was addicted to drugs. I was addicted to everything you can name. That's why God can get the glory. Give him the glory. Amen? But you've got to be truthful. Mercy and truth in the Bible always go together. Where there's truth, there's mercy. No truth, no mercy. Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Amen. And said unto them, Receive ye Holy Ghost. My goodness, my goodness. Guess what he was giving them? So you got to understand something. Genesis was the, the beginning of creation. But the book of John is the beginning of new creation. See, in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. So he was telling them, Ooh, you are getting the Holy Ghost. Let me breathe on you. Because all scripture is God breathing. See, in the New Testament, the only person that God breathed on at that time was when he created the second man, I mean Adam. Because he came off his throne, formed him from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living soul. Are you ready to be breathed? Amen. 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 Boy, this thing, boy, y'all, y'all just don't know. So when he received, when he said, receive you the Holy Ghost, he was telling us, it's time for you to receive salvation. Let God breathe on you so that you can receive salvation for the forgiveness of your sins, past, present, and future. Verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, unto the receive you the Holy Ghost, verse 23. Now, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Now watch this. Verse 24. But Thomas. Now we always hear Thomas called a particular person. Doubt. How many of you have been in Doubt Thomas? I used to get so mad at that. I will never call him Doubt Thomas no more. You know why I won't call him Doubt Thomas? Because Thomas did the same thing I did in my addiction. Show me. I ain't believing it until you show me. But let's see what he does. But we always gave him a bad rap because he said, show me. But well, watch. Now watch this. Let's keep reading. I'm jumping ahead of myself because I'm excited. Verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus. Now that's real name was Didymus. And in the Greek, Didymus means a twin unto him. So who could have been a twin unto him? Because names are very important, brother. Names are very important. I always say, well, he must have been a twin unto Jesus in character. He had the right attitude to ask the right question. Amen. Because he wasn't there when Jesus showed up the first time. But Didymus, right, was not with them when Jesus came. Verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto them, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except, here's the end. Here it is. He's questioning. Ain't nothing wrong with asking questions, people. I'm getting ready.
going to hit you with something else in a second, though. And when he had seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nail, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand inside, I didn't believe that. Look how many things he needed to have proof that this was the Lord who rose from the dead. I got to see the holes, and I got to put my hand in it before I believe. Amen. Sound like he was kind of streetwise to me. I ain't believing it. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> Verse 26. And after eight days, eight, eight days is very important. Every time you see the number eight, it means new beginnings. Amen? Because Amen. Jesus rose on the eighth day, not the seventh. Amen. Seven is completion. He rose on the Sunday morning, the eighth day, giving us new beginnings. What is the new beginning? The grace of God Amen. came into the earth. Amen? So after eight days, again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas this time with them, giving Thomas a new beginning. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. He just showed up again. The doors being shut. And stood in the midst and said, peace be unto them. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger. See, he must have heard Thomas talking because he's God. He hears everything, sees everything, and knows everything. He said, reach here thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my son. And be not what? Faithless, but believe. Be not faithless. What did he tell Thomas? How many of you ready to put your hand in Jesus? Amen. Come on, because that's all he said. Touch me, I'm here for you. Put your hand in me. And what did Thomas do? Did Thomas do that? He had enough evidence. What did he say? Verse 28, Thomas, and Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. He's the only one who ever said that verse. Amen. Don't sound like he's a doubter to me. You sound like a man who needed evidence. It sound like a man who had a healthy doubt. Have you ever heard that? yourself and said, is this thing real? Amen. Amen. It's called healthy doubt. Amen. I question myself, I don't know, maybe once every month, and say, boy, if this thing ain't real, me and God will get to have a real talk. <laughs> it better be real. We're going to have a fight. But it's called a healthy doubt. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. But if you have a total doubt, something's wrong. Amen. If you keep questioning the Lord on his theology, there's something's wrong. But a healthy doubt, God, is this thing real? Then you know that's the enemy. Because if you really met him, and truly met him, and he truly touched you, and you truly touched him, it ain't going to be no doubt. It ain't going to be no doubt. Amen? Amen. Let's keep reading. Jesus said unto him, verse 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed, watch this show, blessed are they that have not seen me. And yet, and believe. That's why I got that reputation. So everybody in this room never seen Jesus. Amen. But how many in this room believe in Jesus? Amen. Guess what? You are blessed. You are highly favored because you believe him in every sin. Amen. Amen. What a reward from the Lord. Amen. Verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. And that believing you might have what? Life through his name. Amen. 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 Are you ready to get transparent enough to walk the wall? Don't be ashamed of your circumstances. Destroy the devil by admitting it. Destroy the devil by not walking in denial. Amen. It may not happen overnight, but you got to look. I'm a very prideful man. But you know what I am as prideful as I used to be? Because I decided to tell the devil, yeah, I'm prideful. Because prideful people don't like to admit they have pride. Amen. Low self-esteem people don't like to admit they have low self-esteem. But guess what? Is there any difference between a prideful person and a person who has low self-esteem? No. You know why? They both prideful in God's eyes because they both require attention. You got a low self-esteem, oh, oh, wait for me. Then you got a prideful person, man, I'm all that bad cheese. They both require attention. So they're both prideful. Amen? So tell on yourself. Like last week's message. Who was it? Come clean, Dad. Don't come clean. The more you come clean, the quicker the devil loses. But if you sit on there and act like you ain't got no issue, act like you all that bad issues, watch the devil rip that cup off. See, let me tell you something. You don't get caught the first time you do it. How many of you been caught the first time you do it? That's why even the law says the criminal comes back to the scene of the crime. 
And we're going to see that she needed someone to hear her, see her, and connect with her. And that's what most women are today, even our day and time. I just love him. I want him to see you. I want him to hear you. I want him to connect with me. And when y'all get that man that kind of power, he says, gotcha. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then he knows he can keep you and go mess with something else because he knows all you're looking at is him. So he ain't going to argue with you. He's going to let you do and give you what you're asking for and still go play his game. And I'm telling you, I'll rat you out because I'm in crack now. There was a time I would get mad at a brother telling men his rules because we got unwritten rules, ladies. And I know y'all do too. So I ain't that naive. Amen? <laughs> y'all do too. So, here it is. He stuck with Leah, verse 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. You know what barren means? Barren means she didn't have a baby. And it was very important. That's all a woman could do back then to give her any type of, of, of concrete you know, validation in the Bible that she was able to bear babies. So if she was barren, she was disrespected. <laughs> Amen. She was disrespected. She had nothing to, to offer the world other than babies. Y'all had no rights at all. Boy, don't. But this is what it was. So he made Rachel fertile and made, I mean, he made Leah fertile and Rachel barren. Right? Verse 32. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. Pay attention to this. For she said, surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. See that? So she's having this baby because she wanted her husband to do what? See her. See her. See her. Looking. She wanted her husband to see her. See, she gave it to the Lord, but she was actually doing it for to get the attention of her husband. Mm. But what happened? He ain't paying her no mind, He ain't saw her. He ain't saw her. Verse 33, as she conceived again. Well, let me lay with him again. He paid me some money. Let me give him some more. He won't love me. So she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord has heard me that I was a hated, he has therefore given me a son that I shall also, also, and she shall call his name Simeon. So now she's doing it to get her husband to do what? Hear I know if I had this one, my husband would hear me. Baby, baby, he and her going one end out the other, but if Rachel calls, he's present. Okay. So now she's going to try twice to get him as well. Hear her and see her, but he ain't paid her no mind. Amen. I'm going somewhere with y'all. Verse 34. And she laid for the money. She received the gift and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband join unto me. Now will he be connected with me? I'm going to lay with him and be connected with him now. I'm bearing three boys. It's very important that a Jewish man has sons. Now she's bearing three of them, right? Because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. That's where you're going to get the tribe of the Levites and the, all the Levites were priests. Amen? They were the only ones who were going to the Holy of Holies. Did he, did he connect with y'all? No. Dead for that night. But he woke up that morning and I connected with you. Now she's kidding. I can't get him to see me. I can't get him to hear me. And I can't get him to connect with me no other way but in the bed. Hello. So what did she do? Now she figured I'm going to use my woman with me. See, God loves you, baby. When a lady begins to weep under God against a man, you better watch out, brothers. When God sees ladies weeping toward him because of your abuse toward her, because of the pain you caused her, you better know the wrath of God is going to kick you in your hell. Believe me, I know. Amen? I hurt plenty of women. And believe me, I've got my tail whipped over. Amen? That's why I learned my lesson. Can't let me turn my head no more. Amen? Because I don't want the Lord's wrath on me. But look at verse 35. So she conceived again. But she got a plan this time. She conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I do what God? Praise the Lord. Got nothing to do with her. She going to praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left there. After that, she never had no more babies. She ain't gave him no more. You know why? Because she started to realize, my husband won't see me. My 